They ain't believe me, these niggas died of me Look what I'm becoming, I did it, made a man of me All the that I did, I swear my mother gonna be proud of me What it do, YouTube? It's Ty Fetty with the Fetty Back at y'all with another video, man Y'all know why we here, to handle business Before the video start, though, man Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe And I'ma say it again, bruh Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe And I'ma say it one more Matter of fact, like, comment, subscribe before I got to beat you up, y'all know what's going on. Look, man, we got the story of Mad Max, NLMB secret weapon. If you don't know NLMB, it's G Herbo and them. You feel me? No Limit Cairo and them. You feel me? We got to take our talents to Chicago. We right back in Chicago in them trenches. Let's get it. Got a little cold, y'all. My bad. I had to turn to zip that hitty up. Yeah. Oh, Chris. Okay, that night. I'm just letting you know what's going on today, okay? Okay. All right. This isn't like a debate or anything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, a GSR kit was done. A gunshot residue kit was done on you. Yes, sir. A uh, ballistics test was done. Even though I did do it, but whatever, but like, that shit weird for you to be out here taking one. Free real, real. Mad Max data. Mad rat hole no limit, bitches. Hold no limit, snitch. They said, don't speak on Max. <laughs> that a rat. Y'all talking about Max. Don't get me started on my boy, folks. That nigga told. Hey, yo, squad. What's the drill? Back with another video, man. You know, Chicago been known for breeding some of the illest rappers and some of the rawest folks in the streets. But NLMB had a super soldier on their ranks, getting busy on the ops. Mad Max was an op stalking machine with a body count allegedly crossing double digits. What is up with everybody in Chicago with double digit bodies, bro? How are people recreating these babies so much that, 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 the old babies can grow up and get double digit bodies and the generation, the population just don't drop, plummet. Everybody walking around there with switches and double bodies. Bruh, damn. His rise was legendary, but his fall tarnished his name as an alleged snitch that told on his deathbed. So today we present the facts, the details and everything else about his life, how it ended and the aftermath of him being gone. So without further ado, Let's skip the play play and get down to business. When it comes to Mad Max, his bodies are allegedly extensive and mainly just tossed in based on hearsay. So I dug a bit deeper to give details nobody else reporting on. Details that made him a special character in the streets and especially details on how the hit on his life went down with footage and official unsealed police reports and proof the snitching allegations were real. Christopher Jackson was known to the streets as Mad Max. His upbringing was in Eastside Chicago. He was surrounded by the gang culture. It wasn't only on the outside in the streets, but it ran in his family. What made it worse is his mother had to manage the weight of taking care of him after his father, Michael Bolden, lost his life in July 2007 when Mad Max was just a jit at 12 years old. Mm. I deep dived into the internet wormhole and found his obituary info, which supports the time frame as Pops passed. Mad Max lost a pillar in his life, but it also affected his sisters and two others he claimed to be his brothers, G Main Ski and Marley. With his moms trying her best to cope, Mad Max, Marley, and G Main Ski joined the family business as learning soldiers under NLMB. NLMB grew in popularity due to G Herbo, who went by Lil Herb back in the day, and Lil Bibby when they got into the rap game. NLMB found their origins in 79th Street, grimly known as Terror Town, and had a firm structure that passed down the gang ways to the next. So we got No Limit G Bull, No Limit Lil Bibby, No Limit White Shine. We got No Limit G Money, No Limit Cairo, No Limit Faro. No Limit Lou, something at the bottom with a lot of words. No Limit Crazy James. We got Mad Max, G Herbo, G Mainski. It's a lot of G's. G Jit, G Gill. Damn, they G's out there, huh? <laughs> God, okay. All right, my fault. No Limit, G, G No Limit. Next Generation. <laughs> Mad Max was one of the members that had something different in him. It was like he was born to be wild, showing the ways of the streets by his uncle Big Los, Rodney, and white folks. 
The monster within him was brewing, and it was necessary given the number of ops that were standing in the NLMB path. Two of the main ones being Renegade GD Savages KTS Vaughn and Black Mob, along with Shooter Shells. Mad Max had the mindset of the streets, but as he grew, life turned him into a seasoned hitter that would become a secret weapon for NLMB. The more dirty did, the more Mad Max was transforming into a cold-blooded hitter. The loss of his uncles would tip him over the edge. Word on the street is that the lakeside ops called white folks lacking in 2006, but he was a fighter and pulled through. Sadly, his injuries never healed up and he succumbed to complications in 2011. Herbo Damn. often shouted him out online and on the songs like Write My Name off his 2014 Welcome to Fazo Land mixtape. The mixtape was dedicated to his homie Fazon Robinson, aka NLMB Fazo, aka G Fazo, who was hit up on April 12, 2010, when the op shot him in the back in Chicago Southside. So is that where the term of Chicago's Air Forces G Fazos came from? The G Fazo used to always have on forces, and they named them like G Fazos. Because if that's true, that's fire. Can't lie. That's fire. It's fire. If that's true, that's fire. I can't lie. To fire. Lost hit man, Max Heavy, but the next unk to pass would be a harder blow. Carlos Alexander, a.k.a. Big Los, was walking outside his home on October 31st, 2012 in the 7900 block of South Escanaba Avenue about 10.30 a.m. when he was approached by two hitters who opened fire before fleeing on foot. The torch was passed on to Mad Max to become the man of the house, and he vowed to keep Los's memory alive. His villain arc turned up a notch. Mad Max was already spinning blocks, but now the blocks were being spun viciously, always outside ready to stretch something. The only people outside, these no limbs. Mad Max's name became as feared as the boogeyman. Word on the street built up of his body count to double digit status, including fallen ops from Outlaw City, Lake So we got 13 of them things. Is this not like kind of wild to y'all though that people really is like throwing bodies on his name, bro? Especially after he passed away, stuff like this. Like, look at him, bro. They just went out on a whole list. Like it's a, a, a checklist. Like it's a grocery list. Like it's a, a, a to-do list. It's 13 of them. So Mad Max had 13 bodies, bro. So everybody, like I said before, everybody in Chicago just got more than 10 bodies, bruh. Okay. Okay. So, okay. All right. Lakeside, KTS, and MTG. While many stories are from the grapevine in the streets, the one that was publicly confirmed shows how much of a demon Mad Max was and why he was in the LMB's secret weapon. The last name on that list, Shooter Shells from Black Mob, felt the full force of Mad Max's wrath. He was the Mad Max of Black Mob, but in a battle for the Savage title, in LMB's Mad Max came out on top. Damn. Reports state that on July 10th, 2017, Cedric Doles, aka Shooter Shells, was approaching his vehicle at 9.32 a.m in the 8100 block of South Paulina when three shooters got out of a white vehicle and fired several oh, shots. He was what up multiple times and lost his life at the scene. They going at it early. AM. Investigated AM. it was a targeted hit linked to NLMB due to connections in his diss track death of 150 released months prior to his murking. No lie, bro was cold on the beat, but say something on wax, NLMB releases Mad Max. A couple days after shells was dropped, Mad Max would be arrested for having a firearm with the serial number scraped off. In 2021, after both passed, unsealed court documents show that the feds had Christopher Jackson, aka Mad Max, is one of the suspects in the gruesome hit. Mad Max was on a bloody path and ops were getting put in the ground. The cops probably would have finally got to him for shooter shells if he was still alive after the findings, but before that, they were trying hard and failing to keep bro locked. Max was in and out of prison so many times for terrorizing his ops. You could make a photo album with his mug shots. 
Bro was doing numbers in the scoreboard, but as with anyone that's living that life so dangerously, his time was sure to come. That's the cycle of the streets, man. That day came on August 3rd, 2018. Reports would surface stating that a man was standing in the courtyard of a building at 3.09 p.m. in the 7600 block of South Kingston when he was shot in the arm but taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center where his condition stabilized. That weekend in Chicago was all out horror, labeled the deadliest weekend in the city that year. Many mourned and many were in pain from the losses. The man that was listed as shot in the arm turned out to be Mad Max, and it was more grim than the reports made it seem. Mad Max was moving into his mom's spot when an op got the drop chasing him down, ended with Mad Max being popped. Cops were being alerted by a caller stating somebody got shot, and it might have been due to a burglary. The caller also said that the person, who is Mad Max, is awake and breathing. <laughs> They arrived at the scene to find Christopher Jackson, aka Mad Max, with bullet wounds to his right upper arm and stomach. And unlike earlier news reports, the actual police report stated that Max was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Obtained footage from the entire moment, the cops arrived to apprehend the main suspect shows the long process of the time cops pulled up to meet Mad Max on the ground. Most of it is blurred in parts, as only the police would have the regular version, but you can hear Mad Max screaming in pain as the paramedics try to get him onto a stretcher and tend to his wounds. Someone beside him tries to keep him awake, saying, keep your eyes open, little bro. <laughs> Part of the video that's unblurred when everyone clears out shows the blood stains on the floor where Mad Max was hit up as cops get the tape to corner off the area. Mm. No, hold on, this is a crime scene, bud. Everybody back up. Everybody back out. The crazy thing about all this is that it shows how cold the streets is. People around wasn't even trying to assist in saving bro life. Man, we need a couple, just a couple questions real quick. Then we'll just no, get... he could talk. I could tell y'all his we, name. Thing is, we don't, we don't, I can't tell y'all. can't tell us his birthday? The thing is, we don't want to interrupt the paramedics right now. Try to help him out. I'm sorry. I can't even talk. Okay, that's fine. That's why, that's why we can't talk to him. We're trying to get information for you to help find the shooter. You got you to help us. So, about her not giving your name, he can't move. The hunt was on for the shooter. A kid would wave down cops telling them a dude with a black hoodie and dreads was just shooting at someone. You got a bag? What? So did you guys, uh, kid, kid wave, kid wave us down. The guy in a black hoodie and dreads was just shooting hey, at what's someone. Going on? They swooped him up right quick and arrested him. And he had a gun on him as well. When they asked where he got it from, he said he found it somewhere. So did this nigga shoot somebody and then just go in Metro PCS trying to get a new phone? Like everything was normal, bro? That's what I be talking about, bro. People don't be thinking. So he just shot somebody, right? And went into a store, obviously close enough to where he, where it happened. Like everything was normal. Am I tripping or does that just not make sense? Like, please let me know if I'm tripping. Or do, please let me know if that just doesn't make sense. Like, what? Like, come on, bro. What? Surveillance footage where they found him debunked that statement because where he said he picked it up, he didn't. He already had the strap on him. Yeah, back it up a little bit. Back it up a little bit. I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it on this tape right here. So, so that passes by. Okay. Yeah, so the, he, yeah, the guy said he says he found the gun. He didn't find the gun. He, was, he shot somebody down the block. And the police came around the block and caught him. Like... So Why are you even that down. close, bro? Camera, the fact that he said he, he picked up the gun, he didn't. He caught Mad Max lacking, and the cops caught him lacking. It's a hood lack of thon. They got your ass on camera. Got me on camera. This is the clearest video I've ever seen. This is the most HD shit ever. An eyewitness at the scene would also describe a dude with long dreads, including that he had blonde tips and was able to ID the suspect in the whip. Tips, 
Long dreads with blonde tips. Yeah. Okay, don't move, okay? The suspect was the respectable lakeside banger Terrell Webb, aka KTS Hell Rail, aka Big Lakeside. You know with a name like Big Lakeside, you ain't nothing to mess with. You might be saying, but the eyewitness stated somebody with dreads. Well, those clips were the second time they held him. When they held him on the day Mad Max was wet up, he had his dreads. Big Lakeside was released after, as Mad Max was still alive, but a twist of fates changed both of their lives. Mad Max would pass away in the hospital a month later from his injuries, and the case status was updated. A man now lost his life due to the shooting. What's even wilder is that according to investigators, Mad Max allegedly snitched on his deathbed identifying Big Lakeside as the one who murked him. Official will Report documents will be released confirming in the documentation that Mad Max told. Big Lakeside and them would celebrate him being home in this Max, not knowing what was about to change. He would post a blurred clip of the alleged video of Max snitching on his deathbed, threatening to release the tape that his lawyer got a hold of, but alleged video was never released. With the release of the documents, the timeline became clear. The truth is that Mad Max spoke to detectives on August 10th, and told them about Big Lakeside, and a warrant was put out for his arrest for attempted hit charge because Max was still living at that point. Big Lakeside tried to dip but was arrested in Iowa on August 22nd. September 3rd, Mad Max passed away, and that's when Webb, aka Big Lakeside, had the charges upgraded to murder and was held without bail after being extradited from Iowa to Chicago. Nearly two months, but Chicago police have filed their first charge stemming from the deadliest weekend Chicago has seen this year. 27 year old Terrell Webb is accused of a rival gang member. Back to the feds, Big Lakeside went, and this time it was serious business as they let bro know the case is no longer about a gun charge, but about a homicide. It was at that moment he knew he effed up. He was facing 45 years to life and blamed it all on Max for snitching. Before that last time he was locked up, Big Lakeside started pushing music. He dropped a diss track exposing Mad Max for ratting. And no lie, it was hard. Bro had some talent, wasted talent, but talent nonetheless. Wish I told him, be stand up, don't result to it. Snitching, damn Max, so get it. You have bodies, you get popped, and you gon' tell you must be kidding. In the vid, Big Lakeside wears a shirt with Mad Max saying 150K, giving off Shooter Shell's death for 150 vibes. Promoting the song, he also posted the shirt online, laughing at Mad Max with the caption, the last time you'll ever touch money. In an interview on the Chris Barnes show, Big Lakeside broke down how he felt when he heard Mad Max had told. Disappointed that somebody that got so many bodies would turn rat when dying, especially since he's innocent. I was, I was, I was on, I was, I was wrongfully charged, man. I ain't gonna lie, I was wrongfully charged, man, for for that shit. Um, I mean, it was it when it came back that uh, like he said my name on that shit. I'm like, damn, what? You know? So basically, basically, I'm like, damn, like you know. I ain't do that shit with blood, you feel me? In that same interview, he let it be known that in order to dodge life in prison, a deal was on the table and he's taking it. He decided that it's best to do some time instead because even if he's innocent and can fight the case, he's scared of how the justice system does African Americans with a pass. So best bet is to do a couple years and be out instead of fighting and losing and doing life. So, um, you said that, that you, you were about to take some time for, for the situation, and I mean, I, I understand. The I, only time, only thing, only only reason I'm taking time, only because I'm scared. Hell yeah, I'm, I was getting you. Big Lakeside would be sentenced to 10 years but it's projected to be out in 2026. His affiliates were heated, coming at Mad Max and them for going out sad and ratting. Free real, real, Mad Max data, mad rat, hold no limit, bitches. Hold no limit, snitch. They said, yeah, don't speak go back. <laughs> Y'all talking about Max? Don't get me started on my boy, folks. That nigga told. Mad Max was a huge loss to NLMB, and they made sure to send him off with everybody right down to G Herbo showing up for the funeral and paying for his name to be flown in the sky by a plane with the statement, See Money NLMB for Life. Well, there you have it. It's a wrap, yo. Until next time, stay safe. How do y'all feel about that? Like, yeah, that's, he snitched for sure. He definitely snitched. But say you his homie, right? And you found out he did that. And you found out he passed away. 
Do you still carry his name on? Do you feel a type of way? Do you just say, like, what do you do, bro? Like, it ain't like he alive. You can say, nah, right, we ain't cool no more. You're not part of this no more. He passed away. So that, how do you even, how do you carry that? Because he definitely did snitch. For sure, that's snitching, bro. But he passed away. So how do you carry that if you was one of his friends before he passed away? Like, do you still check on his mom to make sure she's straight? Do you still check on his little sister to make sure she's straight? Do you still rap his name? Do you still get his probably name tatted or whatever the case? What do you do? Do you dismiss conversations when people bring, like, that's tough. That's tough, bro. Chicago is crazy, bro. Like, I'm so intrigued with Chicago. It's like, it's just so much to, like, bro, you got GDs. You got insane GDs. You got BDs. You got Vice Lords. You got, man, what? It's endless, bro. It's endless, bro. It's endless. You got NLMB. You got what the, take whatever uh Big Real was. Whatever. You got endless, and we're going to keep giving y'all the Chicago videos, man, because I like them and y'all like them, so we're going to like them together, man. With that being said, man, it's Ty Fetty with the Fetty. Make sure y'all stay safe, man. Stay dangerous, man. Stay smart. And like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm going to catch y'all next time. I'm gone.